According to the World Health Organization, over 800,000 people die from suicide annually. This just means that for every 40 seconds, someone somewhere is dying from suicide. My father died at the age of 46, and my mom was pregnant with the ninth child, and she was just 37. So of course, they had to distribute us to family members. So one night, as I slept, I felt a hand moved to my breast. The hand started playing with my nipple, and that hand moved from my nipple to my vagina. And um, that was how the abuse started. The first day it happened, I was in shock because I was, my parents were Christians and sex was never mentioned in our house. Everywhere was dark, so I didn't know who was doing that to me. Now, every night, somebody comes, braces up my dress, ravages my body, and I don't know who this person is. And it continued like that for some time until one day, someone said to me, if you ever tell anybody what is going on in this house, I will kill you. It was that day I was able to put a face to that monster. And sadly, it turned out to be my uncle, my favorite uncle. So I just couldn't wrap my head around it. Somebody I call father is the one who defiled me. Now, in the Christian faith, incest is a sin. So the fact that I knew that that thing was a sin, the guilt almost killed me. I felt that I'd offended God for him to allow this to happen to me. So shame, guilt were the first things that happened to me. Of course, I lost every sense of self-worth, no self-esteem, you know. From this very intelligent girl, I became a very timid child. I became very withdrawn. I didn't want to associate with people again. I never knew that I could confide in a trusted adult. You know, we have more, like I say, we have more information now. 20 years ago, nobody was talking about sexual abuse and how you should run to an adult, how you should scream, how you should tell, talk until somebody believes you. We didn't have this kind of information that time, you know. So he just, he told me that if I say a word to anybody that he was going to kill me. And then he said to me, my mother was not going to believe me. So that alone. So my mother came to Lagos and I tried to tell her and my mother made fun of me. My mother actually told me that God was going to judge me for trying to implicate an innocent man because when my father died, he stood by us. You know, abusers are usually not the monsters we paint. Most of the time, abusers are people we know, we love, we trust. Our parents can actually vouch for them. There are people, trusted people in the society that even you, sometimes you are doubting yourself that it's not possible that this person that I love and trust will want to hurt me like this. But you see, most of the time, they are the ones. 90% of the abusers we have are family and friends. And when she eventually married, she became depressed, not because of the marriage per se, but because of already the pre-existing, predisposing factor which was sexual abuse, death of a family member, and with the current challenges she was having there, bearing children and trying to get a career for herself. Speaking from the point of a therapist, we do understand that depression ranks among the topmost causes of suicide, and this is a global phenomenon. I want to encourage each and every one of us out there that mental health is as important as our physical health and we need to prioritize this very importantly. We need to build a culture of compassion and you know, be more empathic and listen to people not judgmentally so that we can have them to come to us free from judgment, free from criticism and create that safe space that they can discuss freely with us. The journey to wellness can take a lifetime. It has taken me well over 25 years for me to be able to sit down here boldly and talk to you about it. Now, I found I have been admitted in the psychiatric hospital before. 
I have checked myself into a mental health facility before. I've gone through a lot, severe depression that led to suicidal ideations and I've tried to pull through with suicide twice. Even as a married woman, I, I, even as a married woman, I left my family and I tried to kill myself. And you would ask me that, why are you angry? I am angry because a lot of the times, nobody thinks about what the abuse is going through. We want to protect the identity of the abuser or the perpetrator. And that is the reason, sadly, that we will still have more cases. Health, they say, is wealth. But we do understand that there is no health without mental health. Let's understand this very importantly, that when we have a society that is not only physically healthy but also mentally healthy, we we'll begin to start seeing healthier, wealthier and of course happier populace in that society. One of, the, one of the things sexual abuse does when you haven't healed is as a mother, because you are still battling your own inner demons, you're not emotionally present for your children. I was not emotionally present for my children when they were just growing up. So one of the reasons why you need to get help and heal fast is because you're not the only one that will suffer it. The whole family will suffer it. Your children should have access to you. But as a mother, if you are not healed, how can you bring up well-rounded children? A person who is sick cannot take care of another person. So that is why we need more survivors to get help to get healing so that we can bring up whole rounded children. Support, love is the most important thing a survival of sexual abuse needs because you're already condemning yourself. There is already this self-condemnation. So if your loved ones add to it, it breaks you terribly. It breaks you terribly. But if you can get that love and that support, it makes you, it helps you to pick yourself again. And it helps you to tell yourself that, yes, I can pull through this. Depression is real, but help is available and depression is treatable. Suicide, likewise, is preventable. With encouragement in our society and reducing the stigma and discrimination attached to mental health, we would we'd see people talking freely about their mental health and encouraging them to seek help from the right places, the right people, and of course, the right time, and that time is now.